Hey everybody, this is Tim and uh, welcome to the show. Uh, you know, one of the great and uh, possibly most underappreciated instruments in all of music is the harmonica and it's uh, very near and dear to me. And I wanted to talk about some of the great harp players over time that have really influenced me in rock and blues and even pop music. And uh, I am very well aware that there's been literally hundreds of unbelievable harp players over the years. Uh, but I wanted to pick out 15 of the ones that have had the most influence and, and, and most impact on me. And uh, believe me, it wasn't easy getting down to just 15. But I also want to stress that these are in no particular order. So, you know, for me personally, the first time I became aware of the harmonica was with the Beatles. And uh, John Lennon, of course. And, uh, you know, like, um, please, please me, love me, do. Um, is there anything that you want? Which I think is a really for the Beatles, even an underrated song. Even as a little kid, I was like, what does that sound and how do I get it? I think producer George Martin had a lot to do with that. Um, he was looking for a signature sound and, uh, you know, harmonica wasn't used a lot in pop music. I think he was right on and his, uh, his instincts were right on. So just a little harmonica 101. Uh, if you play the harmonica, it's referred to as a harp or a blues harp. And uh, the harmonica is not a chromatic instrument. Uh, you need a particular one to play in a particular key. And there are two main ways to do it. Uh, the first is straight harp or first position, and it's played by uh, blowing out. It, it, if you're playing an A, you need an A harmonica. And uh, you would use it to play stuff like, uh, you know, You hear this style a lot in folk music, and uh, the two people that immediately come to mind there are Bob Dylan and, of course, Neil Young. And uh, they would accompany themselves on their acoustic guitars uh, with a harmonica in a neck rack. And uh, I think, for instance, Neil Young's uh, playing on Heart of Gold is every bit as, uh, as emotional as frickin' Yo-Yo Ma on the cello. And I don't think Dylan's uh, material would have had the same melancholy, uh, you know, if he wasn't playing the, the harp with it, accompanying himself. Anyway, the second way to play the harp is called cross harp. And this is how virtually every uh, uh, blues harp player plays it. And cross harp is different in that uh, you're drawing in for the note. And uh, so it's keyed a little bit different. If the guitar player is playing an E, which is a popular blues key, you go fourth up and you get an A harp. And it enables you to draw in, which enables you to bend notes, uh, which is really what it's all about. So like. It's much more expressive that way. And uh, so in post-war uh, uh, Chicago, harmonica started showing up all over in blues music. Guys like Jimmy Reed, uh, Sonny Boy Williamson, one and two. There were actually two of them, which is a whole nother video because it's uh, uh, pretty salacious. Uh, but Sonny, too, wrote that song, uh, No Way Out, uh, that the Allman Brothers had a big hit with in like, you know, 69, 70, whenever it was. But for me, the guy that really represented in this era was Little Walter. And in 1951, Little Walter was really the first guy that played his harp through cupped hands and into a mic and an overdriven amplifier. And it's still the modus operandi today. So uh, you can use most any mic. Uh, but uh, the preferred mic is a bullet mic like this one. And bullet mics were originally uh, used by uh, radio dispatchers for taxis and things like that. And it's a very popular blues harmonica because you can cup it. Uh, they have very little low end in it. They're very mid-rangey, so they cut over stuff. You can get over amplifiers. So like... <laughs> It, it, it just, you know, it's like pl the difference between playing an overdriven electric guitar and an acoustic one. So Little Walter played with Muddy Waters and he actually had a couple bigger hits than Muddy, like My Babe and Juke. My Babe is like the standard harmonica song ever. And he left for a solo career and was replaced by Junior Wells. And uh, Junior played on Muddy's biggest hit, Manish Boy. And you know, there's an interesting story about Junior Wells. When Junior was a young boy in the South, uh, he worked all week to earn enough money to buy a harmonica. And he went to a pawn shop. He had a dollar fifty, 
and the owner uh, wouldn't take anything less than $2. So when the owner turned away, Junior plunked down the $1.50, he grabbed the harp and, and ran out with it. He got caught and they had a trial and the judge asked uh, young Junior Wells, why did you do it? And Wells said, I, I just had to have the harp. So the judge asked to hear Junior play. And uh, when he was done, uh, the judge uh, reached into his pocket, got 50 cents, gave it to the pawn shop owner and said, case dismissed. So anyways, after Junior Wells uh, in Muddy Waters band came James Cotton. And James Cotton played with Muddy for, for a really long time, but he also had a long solo career. And I think one of the interesting things about James Cotton, one of the interesting records he made, I think it was in 1970, he made a record with Todd Runger. Todd Runger played guitar on it. And I believe it may have been the first record that Todd uh, actually produced front to back. Uh, it was called Taking Care of Business, a really good record. Uh, but uh, there's just a hundred other um, just unbelievable harp players uh, from the Chicago era. But I gotta mention my main man, Holland Wolf. Uh, on top of being perhaps the most distinctive vocalist of all time, he was a harmonica player too, and he, he played in a really gutsy but melodic way. Just listen to Smokestack Lightning sometimes. Love him. And uh, the next one I want to talk about before we leave the Chicago, there's one more guy I want to mention, and his name is Johnny Dyer. And Johnny came up in the 60s, and I had the good fortune to work with him about 15 years ago or so. Uh, I needed a vocalist for a, a television project I was doing, and I, I called a friend at a record company, and he turned me on to Johnny Dyer. And uh, as well as playing blues harp, Johnny was also a terrific vocalist. What I remember is when the session started, he, he, had, he was so far out of my pocket, uh, uh, I thought he couldn't find the groove. Uh, but the real story was I just wasn't used to working with somebody that had such a brilliant grasp of the blues that he invented his own groove as he went along. Uh, it, it was really something. And, um, you know, Johnny had to be into his 70s at, at this time. And I remember he, he, he chain smoked. And, uh, you know, uh, I had to write out the letters. Uh, I had to write out the lyrics in big block letters for him because his eyesight was failing at the time. But, you know, luckily we don't, uh, we don't sing with our eyes, right? But... Um, uh, I think he passed away in 2017. And I, I have to say I really miss this guy, but I'll, I'll play a little bit of what I did with him, what we did with him. Yeah. Check out the groove. Let me take you for a ride. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Unbelievably great. Uh, anyways, when you get into the we get into the 60s, uh, one of the all-time greats is Stevie Wonder, or as he was known then, Little Stevie Wonder from my hometown of Detroit. Check out Stevie doing fingertips and uh, somehow try to make your brain come to terms with the fact that this dude was 12 years old uh, when he played that, and it's maybe the finest harmonica song of all time. Uh -huh. 